Well, I'm Pastor David Hewitt, and we welcome you. We are live at King of Glory Lutheran Church in Carmel, Indiana, and uh, we hope and pray that you will gain sustenance, spiritual sustenance from this Good Friday worship service. We want to remind you that we will be having one Easter service, virtual worship, at 10 a.m. this coming Sunday, two days from now. And also, we're going to sing Lift High the Cross at the end of this service. And if you have a cross that you would like to lift up while we sing Lift High the Cross, uh, that would be great. Well, we gather for worship on this Good Friday in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for a special pictorial presentation of the Passion of the Christ based on all four gospel texts, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Then Jesus and the disciples started out for the Mount of Olives. Jesus took his disciples, as usual, to the other side of the Kidron Valley, and Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. He told them, sit down here, while I go over there and pray. Pray that you may not be tempted. He took Peter and Zebedee's two sons, James and John, with him, and he began to feel alarmed and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is so full of sorrow that I am at the point of death. Stay here and keep watching with me. He withdrew from them about a stone's throw fell to the ground and prayed that, if it were possible, he might not have to suffer what was ahead of him. He said, Abba, Father, you can do anything. If it is possible, and if you wish, take this cup away from me. But let it not be as I want it, but as you want it. An angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. And as he began to struggle inwardly, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like drops of blood falling on the ground. After praying, he got up, went to the disciples, and found them sleeping because they were feeling sad. He asked asked Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Then he said to them, so you could not keep watch with me one hour? Why are you sleeping? Get up, keep watching, and pray that you may not be tempted. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Then he went away a second time and prayed the same as before. My father, if this cup cannot pass by without my drinking it, your will be done. He came again and found them asleep. They could not keep their eyes open, and they did not know what to say to him. After leaving them again, he went away and prayed the same prayer a third time. Then he came back to the disciples a third time and said to them, Sleep on and take your rest. It is enough. The time has come. Now the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, here comes the one who is betraying me. Judas, one of the twelve who was betraying him, also knew the place because Jesus and his disciples often gathered there. So Judas took the troop of soldiers and temple guards from the ruling priests, the scribes, and the elders of the people. Just then, while Jesus was still talking, They came there, a large crowd, with lanterns and torches, swords and clubs. The traitor had given them a signal. He said, the one I kiss is the man. Grab him, take him away, and do not let him escape. Now Jesus went out, knowing exactly what was going to happen to him. Who is it that you are looking for, he asked them. Jesus from Nazareth, they answered him. I am he, Jesus told them. Judas, who was betraying him, was standing with them. 
And when Jesus told them, I am he, they backed away and fell to the ground. He asked them again, who is it that you are looking for? Jesus from Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. Therefore, if you are looking for me, let these others go. In this way, the statement which he had made was fulfilled. I lost none of those you gave me. Then Judas, who was leading them, quickly stepped up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Friend, why are you here? Jesus asked him. Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? The men around Jesus, seeing what was going to happen, asked, Lord, should we strike with our swords? Then the others came forward, took hold of Jesus, and arrested him. Simon Peter, one of those who were standing near Jesus, reached for his sword and drew it. He struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. But Jesus said, let them do it. No more of this. And touching the ear, he healed him. Jesus told Peter, put your sword into its scabbard. For all who take the sword will die by the sword. Or do you think I could not call on my father to send right now more than 72,000 angels to help me? How then are the scriptures to be fulfilled, which say that this must happen? The cup my father gave me, should I not drink it? Then Jesus said to the crowd of ruling priests, captains of the temple, and the elders who had come for him, Did you come out to take me prisoner with swords and clubs as if I were a robber? Day after day I was with you as I sat and I taught in the temple, and you laid no hands on me, and you did not arrest me. But this is your time when darkness rules. All this has happened so that what the prophets have written would be fulfilled. Then all the disciples left him and ran away. A certain young man who also was following him had nothing on but a linen cloth. They tried to grab him, but he left the linen cloth and ran away naked. So the troop of soldiers, the tri tribune, and the Jewish temple guards arrested Jesus, bound him, led him away, and took him to the high priest's palace. They took him first to Annas because he was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, who was the high priest that year. It was Caiaphas who had advised the Jews, it is better that one man should die for the people. Now Simon Peter and another disciple who were following uh, were following Jesus at a distance. The other disciple was known to the high priest and went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard. But Peter was standing outside the door. So the other disciple, whom the high priest knew, went out and talked to the girl watching the door and brought Peter into the high priest's courtyard. The slaves and the temple guards who were standing around had lit a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had made a heap of burning coals because it was cold. As they sat together and were warming themselves, Peter was also standing. Then he sat with the temple guards, warming himself by the fire. He wanted to see how this would end. Then the high priest asked Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. Jesus answered him, I have spoken publicly to the world. I have always taught in a synagogue or in the temple where all the Jews gather, and I have not said anything in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard me what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the temple guards standing near Jesus slapped his face. Is that how you answer the high priest, he asked? Jesus answered him, if I said anything wrong, tell us what was wrong. But if I told the truth, why do you hit me? Anna sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. All the ruling priests, elders, and scribes had been called together. 
the ruling priests and the whole Jewish council tried to get some testimony against Jesus in order to kill him, but they could not find any. Although many came forward and gave false testimony against him, their statements did not agree. At last, two men came forward and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I can tear down God's temple and build it in three days. I will tear down this temple made by human hands and in three days build another not made by human hands. But even on this point, their statements did not agree. Then the high priest stepped forward and asked Jesus, Are you not going to reply to what these men are testifying against you? But he was silent and did not answer. Again, the high priest asked him, Swear by the living God and tell us, Are you the Christ, the Son of God, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, Jesus said, but I tell you, From now on, you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. Why do we need any more witnesses? You just heard the blasphemy. What is your verdict? Then they all condemned him. He is guilty and deserves to die, they answered. Then some of them began to spit in his face. The men who were holding Jesus were making fun of him. They covered his face, struck him with their fists, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy, you Christ, and tell us who hit you. And they went on insulting him in many other ways. Even the temple guards took him and slapped him. Now Peter was sitting outside down in the courtyard. While he was sitting in the light of the fire, one of the maids of the high priest, the doorkeeper, came to him and asked, You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? You were with the man from Nazareth, this Jesus, the Galilean, she said, looking straight at him. He too was with him. But he denied it in front of them all. I I don't know him, woman, and, and I don't know what you're talking about. He went out to the entrance, then a rooster crowed. A little later, another mate saw him. He was with Jesus from Nazareth, she also told those who were standing around. Again, Peter denied and swore, I am not. I don't know the man. About an hour later, another insisted. It's obvious that this man was also with him. Why, he's a Galilean. After a little while, those who stood near approached Peter and said, It's obvious you're also one of them. Why, your accent gives you away. You're a Galilean. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Then he began to curse and swear, I don't know this man whom you're talking about. Just then, while he was still speaking, a rooster crowed a second time. Then the Lord turned and looked at Peter, and Peter remembered the Lord telling him, Before the rooster crows twice today, you will deny me three times. So he went outside and broke down and wept bitterly. As soon as it was morning, all the ruling priests and the elders of the people and the scribes, that is, the whole Jewish council, had a meeting. They brought Jesus before their council and asked, Are you the Christ? Tell us. He said to them, If I tell you, you will not believe me. And if I ask you a question, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be sitting at the right hand of the power of God. Are you then the son of God, all of them asked? He answered them, as you say, I am he. Why do we need any more testimony, they asked. We ourselves have heard him say it. Then the entire assembly decided to put Jesus to death. They stood up, bound Jesus, took him from Caiaphas to the palace, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. 
it was early in the morning. When Judas, who betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned, he felt sorry and brought the 30 pieces of silver back to the ruling priests and elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. They said, what do we care? That's your problem. Then Judas threw the money into the temple and went away and hanged himself. Falling head first, he burst in the middle, and all his intestines poured out. When the ruling priests took the money, they said, It is not right to put it into the temple treasury since it is blood money. So they decided to use it to buy the potter's field for the burial of strangers. That is why that field has ever since been called the field of blood. Then what the prophet Jeremiah said was fulfilled. They took the 30 shekels of silver, the price of him on whom the children of Israel had set a value, and they gave them potter's field as the Lord directed me. To keep from becoming unclean, they wanted to celebrate the Passover. The Jews themselves did not go into the palace. So Pilate came out to them and asked, What accusation are you bringing against this man? They answered him, If he were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate therefore told them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. The Jews answered him, We are not permitted to execute anyone. In this way, the statement that Jesus made when he predicted how he would die was fulfilled. Then they began to accuse him. We found that he makes our people disloyal, keeps them from paying taxes to the emperor, and says he is Christ, a king. Pilate went back into the palace and called for Jesus. Jesus stood before the governor. Pilate then asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Did you think of that yourself, Jesus asked, or did others tell you about me? Am I a Jew, Pilate asked? Your own people and the ruling priests handed you over to me. What did you do? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom kingdom belonged to this world, my helpers would fight to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not of this world. Then you are a king, Pilate asked him. Jesus answered, you are correct in saying that I am a king. I was born and came into the world for this very reason, that I might testify to the truth. Everyone who lives in the truth listens to me. Pilate said to him, what is truth? After saying this, he went out to the Jews again and told the ruling priests and the crowd, I do not find this man guilty of anything. While the ruling priests and elders were accusing him, he said nothing. Don't you have anything to say to this? Pilate asked him again. Don't you hear how many charges they are bringing against you? But Jesus did not answer him any more in regard to a single thing that was said, so that Pilate was very much surprised. The priests and the crowd kept urging him. He stirs up the people by teaching all over Judea, beginning in Galilee and coming here. When Pilate heard that, he asked, Is the man from Galilee? And when he found out that Jesus came from the country ruled by Herod, he sent him to Herod, who was also in Jerusalem at that time. Herod was very glad to see Jesus. For a long time, he wanted to see him because he was hearing about him, and he was hoping to see Jesus work some miraculous sign. He asked him many questions, but Jesus did not answer him. The ruling priests and the scribes were standing there and accusing him vehemently. Herod and his soldiers treated Jesus with contempt and made fun of him. They put a splendid garment on him and then sent him back to Pilate. 
On that day, Herod and Pilate became friends. Before this, they had been enemies. Then Pilate called the ruling priests, the other leaders, and the people together. He told them, You brought me this man as one who turns the people against the government. And now look, I have examined this man before you and found him innocent of the things of which you accuse him. And Herod did too, because he sent him back to us. You see, he has not done anything to deserve death. So I am going to have him whipped and, and let him go. Now at every festival, the governor used to free one prisoner whom the crowd wanted and requested. At that time, there was a well-known prisoner by the name of Barabbas. Barabbas had been thrown into prison with the rebels who, in their revolt, had committed a murder that had taken place in the city. And the crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them as he had done before. You have a custom that I set one person free for you at the Passover, Pilate answered them. Whom do you want me to set free for you? Barabbas or Jesus, the king of the Jews, who was called Christ? For he knew the ruling priests had handed Jesus over to him because they were jealous. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent someone to tell him, let that righteous man alone, because I suffered much in a dream last night on account of him. But the ruling priests and elders stirred up the people so that Pilate would release Barabbas to them and have Jesus killed. The governor asked them, which of the two do you want me to set free for you? The whole crowd then shouted, not this one, away with him. Free Barabbas for us. But because Pilate wanted to let Jesus go, he called out to the people again. Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called Christ, whom you call the king of the Jews? Then they all kept yelling, crucify, crucify him. So Pilate asked them a third time, why, what wrong has he done? I have found nothing in him that deserves death. So I am going to have him whipped and let him go. But they began to shout even louder, crucify him. Their shouts were overpowering Pilate. Pilate took Jesus and had him whipped. The governor's soldiers took Jesus into the palace, which is the praetorium. And they called together and gathered the whole troop of soldiers around him. The soldiers took off his clothes and, and put a scarlet robe on him. They twisted some thorns into a crown, placed it on his head, and put a stick in his right hand. Then they went up to Jesus, knelt before him, and worshipped him. Making fun of him, they began to greet him. Hail, King of the Jews! After having spit on him, they took the stick and began to beat him on the head with it and slapped his face. After they had made fun of him, Pilate went outside again and told them, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no guilt in him. Jesus came outside, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Look at the man. When the ruling priests and the servants saw him, they shouted, Crucify, crucify him. Pilate told them, Take him yourselves and crucify him, for I do not find him guilty of anything. The Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to the law, he deserves to die because he has claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard them say that, he was frightened more than ever. He went into the palace again and asked Jesus, where are you from? But Jesus did not give him an answer. Pilate then asked him, aren't you going to speak to me? Don't you know that I have the authority to free you or the authority to crucify you? Jesus answered him, you would not have any authority over me if it had not been given to you from above. That is why the man who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. 
This made Pilate anxious to let him go. But the Jews shouted, If you let him go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who makes himself a king is speaking against Caesar. When Pilate heard these words, he took Jesus outside and sat in the judge's seat at a place called Stone Pavement, or Gabbatha in Aramaic. It was the day of the preparation of the Passover in about six in the morning. He said to the Jews, look at your king. Then they shouted, away with him, kill him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, should I crucify your king? We have no king but Caesar, the ruling priests answered. When he saw that he was not getting anywhere, but that a riot was breaking out instead, Pilate took water and washed his hands before the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. See to it yourselves. And all the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then Pilate, wanting to satisfy the people, decided that what they demanded should be done. He let them have Barabbas, who had been put in prison for revolt and murder, for whom they were asking. Then Pilate handed Jesus over to, the, to them to be crucified in line with their wishes. The soldiers took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. So they took Jesus and led him out to crucify him. He was carrying his own cross. Now, as they were going out, they found a man from Cyrene by the name of Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus. He was on his way in from the country. And as he was about to pass by, they took hold of him, laid the cross on him, and forced him to carry it behind Jesus. A large crowd of the people followed him. The women in the crowd were beating their breasts and weeping over him. He turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not continue to cry over me. Rather, cry over yourselves and your children. Because the time is coming when people will say, Blessed are the women who could not have children, the wombs that did not bear, and the breasts that did not nurse. Then people will say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if this is done to the green tree, what will be done to a dry one? Now two others who were criminals were also taken away to be executed with him. They took Jesus to what was called the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Golgotha. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh and gall, but when he tasted it, he refused to drink it. They crucified him there. At that time, they crucified two robbers with him, one at his right and the other at his left, and Jesus in the middle. It was nine in the morning when they crucified him. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier, throwing dice for them to see what each one should get. And the tunic was left over. The tunic was without a seam, woven in one piece from top to bottom. They said to one another, let's not tear it, but let's throw dice and see who gets it. In this way, what the scripture said was fulfilled. They divided my clothes among them, and for my garment they threw dice. So that is what the soldiers did. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Pilate also wrote a notice, the accusation that had been written against him. They placed above his head on the cross. It read, This is Jesus from Nazareth, the king of the Jews. Many Jews read this notice because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. 
and it was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. Therefore, the ruling priests of the Jews told Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but he said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. The people stood there watching. Those who passed by ridiculed him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! You who are going to tear down the temple and build it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. In the same way, the ruling priests, together with the scribes and elders, were sneering and made fun of him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. He should save himself if he is the Christ whom God has chosen. He is Israel's king. He should come down from the cross now, and we shall believe him. He has put his trust in God. Let God rescue him now, if he so wishes. For he said, I am the son of God. The soldiers also made fun of him when they went up to him and offered him sour wine. They said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also were insulting him. One of the criminals who were hanging there was mocking him. Aren't you the Christ? Save yourself and us. But the other, warning him, asked, Aren't you afraid of God? You are condemned just as he is. Our punishment is just, for we are getting what we deserve for what we've done. But this one has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. I tell you the truth, Jesus said to him. Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary from Magdala were standing near the cross of Jesus. Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing near. Woman, he said to his mother, there is your son. Then he said to the disciple, there is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his own home. It was about noon when darkness came over the whole land, lasting until three in the afternoon, because the sun stopped shining. About three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why did you forsake me? When they heard him say that, some of those standing by, nearby, said, listen, he's calling Elijah. After this, knowing that everything had now been finished, and to have the words of the scripture come true, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. Immediately, one of the men ran, took a sponge, soaked it in sour wine, put it on a hyssop stem, held it to his mouth, and offered him a drink. The others said, let's see if Elijah comes to save him. When Jesus had taken the wine, he said, it is finished. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. After he had said this, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. The word of the Lord. Now, in response to that presentation of the gospel for tonight, let us sing together, Were You There When They Crucified My Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Oh, 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 
Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they pierced him in the side? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Oh, 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 sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when the sun refused to shine? Were you there when they laid him in a tomb? Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Oh, 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 oh sometimes it causes me to tremble. Tremble, tremble. Were you there when they laid him in the tomb? Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, who is Jesus the Christ. Amen. You know, I've heard the phrase spoken over and over again over the last several weeks. Not any less true for being repeated so often. We are in uncharted territory. We had never heard of the virus before January. We had never seen a virus behave like this. We have never seen a shutdown of activity before so total here and all over the world. We have never seen such a strain on our modern medical establishment. We have never seen this, never seen that, and on and on and on. But now, no matter how many times we say we are un in uncharted territory, it is still true. You want to know something weird? The Bible is almost all about uncharted territory. Adam and Eve were sent out of paradise to what? Uncharted territory. God called Abraham to leave his house and his extended family to travel a long distance to Canaan to uncharted territory. Moses freed his people, left Egypt crossing the Red Sea. And guess what? 
They wandered for 40 long years in the Sinai Peninsula, uncharted territory. Even though Peter tried to get Jesus to agree to build this great temple for Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration, Jesus refused and was always on the move not even visiting his favorite old haunts. Every day to his death, Jesus walked through uncharted territory after uncharted territory on behalf of his ministry for God. And as he so vividly put it, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The same with the Apostle Paul. In fact, Paul bragged a bit about going where no other Christian apostle had gone. To Thessalonica, to Philippi, Galatia, Athens, Corinth, you name it. He went and evangelized to us poor Gentile schlumps. He went only to uncharted territory. Now, if we were to read the book of Joshua chapter 2, we would hear about this successor to the just dead Moses, his assistant, Joshua. Joshua was about to lead his people finally, after 40 years, into that promised land, Israel, more uncharted territory. Now, as the Jewish people approached the border, the River Jordan, they slept overnight Then the very next morning, Joshua sent his officers through the Jewish camp and talked to thousands upon thousands of men, women, and children. The officers announced to them all, When you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place. Follow it, they said so that you may know the way you should go. For you have not passed this way before. Now that phrase, I think, should hit home for us. Because we, (laughs) we have not passed this way before. I think right now that's the greatest gift that Jesus gives us. He died for us. He rose again to eternal life for us. He's gone this way before. You know, whenever we get lost, we like to to go up to somebody else and ask for directions. And what we don't want is for to ask someone directions only to be told, I don't know. I've never been that way before. You know, the Apostle Paul at one point describes Christ as the beginning of the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything, Jesus. Now, as we contemplate what happened on that first Good Friday, yes, it is agonizing to imagine Christ's bloody body suffering for us and for all people that God has made on that cross. But it's always comforting, too, to know Whenever we feel we're weighing over our heads, that someone like Jesus is there to take the hit for us so that we can move forward in our lives. I have to tell you, the Christ of the cross is paving the way for each of us in these strange times. Our loving God has prepared the way for us so that we may get up the courage to get up in the morning And go minister and serve all the people that God has made. Now, if you have your cross available, I'd like you to pick it up and hold it before you. Thanks. Remember, the cross is not just for Christ. The cross is for you and me. Each one of us has been gifted, and I really mean gifted, with your own cross, your very own. A cross fashioned and shaped 
by God for you to take up and carry for the rest of your earthly life. Deny yourself, Jesus once told us. Take up your cross and follow me. So tonight and and every day and night, let's not only take up our cross, but also lift high our cross. Lift high our service. Our service of sharing the love of God with others to all people. And as we sing, lift high the cross, let us lift high and live out the crosses of our life and live it out together. Amen. Now let us sing Lift High the Cross together. We'll start with the refrain, and then after each of the four verses, back to the refrain again. Lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. Come, Christians, follow where our captain trod, our King victorious. Christ, the Son of God, lift high the cross, the love of Christ proclaim, till all the world adore his sacred name. All newborn servants of the crucified bear on their brows the seal of him who died lift high the cross the love of christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name O lord once lifted on the glorious tree as thou hast promised draw us all to thee lift high the cross the love of christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred name so shall our song of triumph ever be praise to the crucified for victory lift high the cross the love of christ proclaim till all the world adore his sacred Let us pray our Good Friday prayer. Merciful God, your Son was lifted up on the cross to draw all people to himself. Grant that we who have been born out of his wounded side may at all times find mercy in him, in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We thank you for joining us tonight. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's peace. In the name of the Father 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.